Okay, I've had a request for question number one, part D, from May, June 2016, paper four, variant one. This question number one, part D. Hand invests $550 at a rate of X percent per year compound interest. At the end of 10 years, he has a total of $638.3, correct to the nearest cent, 0 0.30, correct to the nearest cent. Find the value of X. Okay, so we know with compound interest, yeah, you're not going to use I equals PRT over 100. No, nope, that's for simple interest. Okay, we're going to use compound interest where the amount keeps increasing uh, on the basis of the previous year's Okay, it keeps increasing upon an increasing amount. Basically, um, for compound interest, we take the original amount, 550, and we multiply by the multiplying factor. So, for example, if this was 5%, uh, we put 100% plus 5%, which would be 105%, which would then be 1.05. Now, what do we do when they have an X here? Okay, well, it's going to be 100% plus X%. percent. Okay, which is the same as, you know, because this becomes 1.05, this is like the same as 1 plus 5 over 100. 1.05 is like 1 plus 5 over 100, so this will be like 1 plus x over 100. Okay, to the power of 10, because 10 years. Okay, so if you haven't memorized the formula, it's not a big problem as long as you understand this concept. But there is a formula, the new value is equal to the principal, the original amount times 1 plus the rate over 100 to the power of number of years. So that's how this is, that's the amount that you invest. That's the multiplying factor, so it's 1 plus x over 100. x is the rate, which they said is the rate, time to the power of 10, okay? So let me just get rid of all of this stuff here, just to introduce us. Now, we know that it says at the end of 10 years, so after this becomes raised to the power of 10, 10 years, he's going to have 638.30, here, um, at the end of those 10 years. So the total amount he has in his account is this much. And that's what this compound interest formula tells us. It tells us the whole new amount increases this much by that, um, by this percentage, this number of times. Okay, now, we have to solve this equation. This is in like an exponential equation, we have to solve it. Well, actually, it's not an exponential equation, actually. It's a normal equation, it just has a power. So first thing we've got to do is divide both sides by 550 to get rid of this 550. So we have 1 plus x over 100, all of that is to the power of 10, is equal to 638.3 over 550. Divide by 550. Okay, so that is, uh, I'm not going to work out what that is, I'm just going to continue from here and write down my steps and then put in the calculator. So for the next step, what we need to do is, we need to get rid of this power of 10. Now, if, some, if you've got x squared equals 9, for example, we take the square root of both sides. That gives x equals 3. If we have x cubed equals, for example, 8, we take the cube root of both sides. So you take the cube root of both sides and it gets rid of the cube root. Okay, so when you take the square root, it gets rid of the square root. It gets rid of the square. The cube root gets rid of the cube. That will give you x equals 2 and so on. So if we have something raised to the power of 10 and we want to get rid of the power of 10, we can take the 10th root of both sides. So I take the 10th root of 1 plus x over 100 to the power of 10, and that takes care of getting rid of the square root, the 10th root. But I must also take the 10th root of the other side. So the 10th root of 638.3 divided by 550. Now, how do we do that? Of course, we need to calculate. How do we use a calculator to do that? Well, we look for the button that has the uh, root sign but with two boxes. So I can see if I press, let me put it inside, I'll show you. In inverse, or shift, sorry, shift and this button here. This is the button we need. We're going to put the root that we need, the 10th root, so I'll write 10 outside the square root sign on top, and then inside I'm going to write 630, I'll make it as a fraction, 638. Point three divided by 550. Okay, when I when I work that out, it gives me 1.15000. So I know now that on this side I've got 1 plus x 
of 1 plus x over 100 is equal to, and that number we had there was 1.015 1, 1 and then some zeros. 1.015, we had some zeros there, dot, 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 dot. Now, I have got to find x, so I've got to get rid of this one. So I'm going to take one from both sides. So I'll have x over 100, I'm just continuing on from there. X over 100 is equal to now 1.015 minus 1 gives me 0. 0.015000. Continue on. And then I've got to multiply both sides by 100. So the decimal point moves two spaces 1, 2. So I'm left with 1.50 and a few zeros after that. So I write my answer to three significant figures. So X equals 1.50. Okay? So there we have question number 1D from that paper. I hope you understood and thank you for listening. For listening.